Well, take a look at this. This massive tree over here fell on Tuesday night, and neighbors have spent the past two days working to help clean this up. Where we found car after car had been damaged by stray bullets in last night's shooting, just like this one, where we saw one, two, three bullets go through this car. You can see the home right behind me here sadly was not saved by this fire, but their neighbor's home right next door was seemingly untouched by the flames. Since that tragic shooting, and you can see here the owner hired on a private security company to help keep an eye on things and to also help customers feel a little bit more at ease. One of the only things left untouched by the flames on this property was this wooden sign. It was the only way we could even identify this as Jill's property. The victims in this case told me even though it took decades to get to this day, they feel as though justice has finally been served. Just the indoor water park alone is said to be the size of the entire field at Levi's Stadium where the San Francisco 49ers play. And the school has innovation down to their desks with dry erase surfaces built in. Today was a deeply emotional day for so many homeowners that finally got a chance to get past this roadblock you see set up right behind me here to check on their homes. Some came back in tears to find their homes miraculously saved by the fire, but others found their homes completely destroyed. As a blanket of eerie smoke lingers over homes that didn't make it. If I uh, think about it too hard, I'll just start crying. So. I don't know what to say. Michael Johnson is left picking up the pieces of the home he spent 28 years building. I got no. I got here about 1:30, 2 o'clock in the morning. Was the fire was going on, and so I was doing the best I could. It was too late to fight anything because this was gone. His brand new $200,000 boat. He's only taken out on the water twice. Uninsured too. <laughs> because it's brand new. Also gone, along with 71 years of memorabilia. Bronze sculptures and American antiques, about 100 different scales, gold scales and stuff from back in the gold country days. Um, signed Ansel Adams prints, five of those. With a garden hose in hand, some of his neighbors returned to much different news. It's, it's hard. You know, I, I actually told a few people, I'm like, I don't expect it to be there. So, yeah. I'm pretty grateful. A charred footprint of the flames unforgiving path just feet and sometimes inches away from homes. Thank you firefighters. Yep. You oh, know, we really appreciate it. Not far from where Michael once called home. I don't know what what why one goes and one doesn't. Please. This has got to change. This has got to change. Amber Leslie is mourning the loss of her nine-year-old granddaughter. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't move from this park without feeling sick. She was killed and three others were injured in a drive-by shooting on Saturday afternoon at Mama Mark's Park in broad daylight. I know my grandbaby wasn't your intended target. I know she wasn't. My grandbaby never hurt nobody. Damon DeRoe was there for it all. I just heard about 13, 14 shots, so everybody got low. And he says he's tired of the violence. This is this has to stop. It's only going to get worse. If don't nobody stand up right now and do what they need to do right now to intervene in what's happening, it's only going to get worse. He's here with Advanced Peace and Brother to Brother, two groups dispatched on the ground to do community intervention in times of crisis. Many of the people involved with both groups are former gang members themselves. A lot of us has been in, been there before and done that, and we don't want we want to give back from what we took from our community. We just want to help and, and, and make sure that we have a safe environment for the youth coming up to be able to walk these streets and be at a park to be able to play safe. Sacramento police say after this weekend's string of violence, the city is up to 35 homicides so far this year. At this time last year, that number was only 25. We need to get it back. I want it back. I want kids to be able to ride bikes, ride, skate down the sidewalks and not running from bullets. Sherry Kirk, the victim's cousin, grew up in this Del Paso Heights neighborhood. But after repeated acts of violence and no change, she says this is no longer the same place she was raised in. Until we deal with the root of the problem, it's going to be a continuous cycle. Yeah, here we go. This is 11-year-old Tommy Laredo. We first met him two years ago. Woo! Woo! 
as his family was working through the fundraising process to bring a playground for all to Modesto. I'm going to take this. But in order to bring a playground like this to town, it's going to cost upwards of two and a half million dollars. <laughs> As Tommy's team hit a major fundraising milestone thanks to a recent donation from the city of Modesto, reaching their halfway mark with more than $1.2 million, Tommy and his mom Rachel took us back to the most magical place that inspired this goal. So it was really invigorating for our team to see that milestone be hit and it just kind of reignited you know, the passion of why we're doing this. Rachel came up with this idea after visiting the Magical Bridge Playground all the way out in Palo Alto four years ago. How do we bring something as wonderful as this to our community to share with the families that you know, would benefit from an inclusive playground. She hit the ground running, contacting Modesto's city and county leaders to develop a plan for what would later be called the Awesome Spot Playground and started fundraising efforts right away. So an inclusive playground allows children and adults of all abilities to play together. Um, children who use wheelchairs or walkers are sometimes left, oftentimes left on the sidelines of typical playgrounds. While the city says they won't be able to break ground until it is fully funded, this is what it's going to look like. Where everyone can play. Every time I come here and see all the people, I can uh, know that there's a lot of other kids in wheelchairs. Um, like me. Complete with wide ramps all over, smooth surfaces, accessible swings, and a slide mountain, just to name a few things. We are on top of Slide Mountain. Hoping to make this dream a reality in Modesto by spring of 2020. This is awesome. In Palo Alto, Lena Howland, ABC 10 News.